Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Indeed, he is risen from the dead. He is not here. Go and meet him in Galilee. Let us begin this Easter Holy Communion service with the opening song, Jesus Christ is there. Yeah. standing let us worship God with the spirit of uh, great resurrection that we are experiencing today 
in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we celebrate this great day in this worship, let us wait on the Lord to give us the experience of resurrection and the great event of Easter. The Lord is risen and risen indeed. Let us pray. We'll follow the worship found in page number one. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men in whom he is well pleased. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that taketh away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that taketh away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art Lord, Thou only art most high. O Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Here, the commandments that Jesus, God has given to us. God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. And you shall not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Dearly beloved, we have come together to hear God's most holy word, and to receive the body and blood of the Lord. Let us therefore kneel and examine ourselves in silence, seeking God's grace that we may draw near to him with repentance and faith. On this day, God in Jesus Christ has forgiven all our sins and defeated the death through the resurrection so that we may not be slave to sin anymore. Let us examine ourselves. If what has been made true in and through the resurrection is real in our life. Is sin defeated within us, in our life? Either do truly and earnestly repent you of your sin and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to live a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Make your humble confession to Almighty God. 
that you may be reconciled anew to him through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us say together, Heavenly Father, we confess that we have sinned against thee and our neighbor. We have walked in darkness rather than in light. We have named the name of Christ, but have not departed from iniquity. Have mercy upon us, we beseech thee. For the sake of Jesus Christ, forgive us all our sins and cleanse us by thy Holy Spirit. Quicken our consciences and enable us to forgive others that we may henceforth serve thee in newness of life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Hear the gracious word of God to all who truly turn to him through Jesus Christ. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have eternal life. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of His great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who forgive their brothers and sisters, and with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto Him, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us pray the collect for today, the theme being Resurrection, celebrating boundless transformation. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. From the waters of death you raise us with him and renew your gift of life within us. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. We will have the scripture portions. The first reading of the day is taken from 2 Samuel, chapter 20, verses 14 to 21. 2 Samuel, 20th chapter, beginning from the 14th verse. And he went through all the tribes of Israel unto Abel, and to Beth Maccab, and all the Berites. And they were gathered together, and went also after him. And they came and besieged him in Abel of Beth Maccah, and they cast up a bank against the city, and it stood in the trench. And all the people that were with Joab battered the wall to throw it down. Then cried a wise woman out of the city, Hear, hear, say, I pray you unto Joab, come near hither, that I may speak with thee. And when he was come near unto her, the woman said, Art thou Job? And he answered, I am he. Then she said unto him, Hear the words of thine handmaid. And he answered, I do hear. Then she spake, saying, They were wont to speak in old time, saying, They shall surely ask counsel at Abel. And so they ended the matter. I am one of them that are peaceable and faithful in Israel. Thou seekest to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why wilt thou swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? And Job answered and said, Far be it, far be it from me that I should swallow up or destroy. The matter is not so, 
But a man of Mount Ephraim, Sheba the son of Bichri by name, hath lifted up his hand against the king, even against David. Deliver him only, and I will depart from the city. And the woman said unto Joab, Behold, his head shall be thrown to thee over the wall. Here ends the first reading. Thanks be to thee, O God. The second lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 20 to 28. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 20 to 28. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all shall be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, after that those who are Christ's at his coming. Then comes the end, when he delivers up the kingdom to the God and Father, when he has abolished all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be abolished is death. For he has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when he says all things are put in subjection, it is evident that he is accepted who put all things in subjection to him. And when all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself also will be subjected to the one who subjected all things to him, that God may be all in all. Here ends the second reading. Thanks be to thee, O God. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Gospel reading for today is taken from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 to 11. Mark 16, beginning to read at verse 1. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You see Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now, when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him as they moaned and wept. But when they heard that he was alive and had seen by her, they would not believe it. Here ends the reading. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Church choir will render to us a special singing, and after that, the lack of friends family also. 
Let's play the music. The song that we're going to sing is called the Easter Hallelujah. The song is the Easter version of the well-known Christmas Hallelujah. 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 
Three days went by, again they came to move the stone, to bless the slave. With oil and spies anointing, hallelujah. But as they went to move the stone, they saw that they were not alone. For Jesus Christ has risen, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. This is a time for praise and worship. We just listen to the Christmas Alleluia. The Lord is risen today. Alleluia. We invite you all to join us as we sing these uh, simple choruses rejoicing in the fact that Christ is risen today. And all that we need to do is to give thanks to the risen Lord and celebrate walking in the light.
A special song now. He's living today. The Savior died a world to save. But he's living today. And we've got to let everyone know, wherever we go, that Jesus Christ is living today.
for the wonderful <coughs> singing from both the group, particularly the church group, and Lakers and family also. The notices to the congregation. The preacher for today's Easter service is the Reverend Dr. J. Chandra, the incumbent pastor. And there's going to be the morning service at 8.30 a.m., the preacher will be Dr. Alfred Stephen. It's going to be the Holy Communion service. And then no evening service for today's Easter Eve service at 6.30 p.m. It is not going to be carried out. <coughs> Next Sunday, God willing, a regular Holy Communion service will be held at 7.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. in the evening. Next Sunday, after the service, the Women's Fellowship members has planned to carry out a visit to Mrs. Selvi Sandosam's family and as the mother in her old age situation needs our support and prayers and the Women's Fellowship members are asked to gather soon after the service. The transportation is arranged after the service, please do contact Reverend Dr. Ratri Alfred Stephen in this regard if anyone needs to, some more information. And the family members, Mr. Monikam, has asked us to give this notice to the congregation. There will be a Thanksgiving service in memory of late Beverly Ann Monicum at 4.30 p.m. on the 19th Tuesday in the church. Please do join with the family and support through your prayers. <clears throat> and indeed, it gives me a joy to convey the greetings from our church secretary, Marcus Clare, as he is uh, with the family, his uh, son and the daughter-in-law, with his wife, and he sent his uh, greetings, Easter greetings, to all the congregation members and to the staff members and uh, the project staff in the Church of the Divine Patients. <coughs> Birthdays and wedding anniversaries. <coughs> On the 17th, Mrs. Jesu Cynthia, she is celebrating her birthday. May God bless her. On the same day, Mr. Praveen Kumar, too, is celebrating the birthday. On the 19th, Samuel Selvam. On the 20th, Mrs. Jasmine Selva Kumari, Mrs. Ejla Venetia. On the 21st, Mrs. Elizabeth Pereira. On the 22nd, Rajvin Pradeep. On the 23rd, Mrs. Krishna 
Anthony. And it's our best wishes to the persons, those who are celebrating the birthday in the forthcoming days and forthcoming week. <coughs> the wedding anniversaries are 17th, Dana Lakshmi, Mrs. Dana Lakshmi, John Deepan and Mr. John Deepan. On the 18th, Jesse Bono Gladstone and Mr. Gladstone Michael Rajadurai. And 19th, Devakuru by Nyanavaram and Reverend Dr. Nyanavaram. May God bless them as they celebrate the wedding anniversaries. <coughs> Let us pray for the sick and the people, those who are celebrating the birthday and wedding anniversaries. Let us pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace on those who are ill. Thank you, Lord, for your healing touch in their sick bed. Give the persons, those who are surrounded with them in their sick bed, and sufficient grace to understand the suffering, and bless them too. This we ask in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us continually pray for the people, those who are receiving birthdays and wedding anniversaries. God bless you on your birthday and wedding anniversary. God bless you and sustain you with each new dawning day. God grant you grace and wisdom to travel life's highway. God give you strength and courage when things perplex your mind. God help you to reach your cherished goal you seek and strive to find. God comfort you when distress and trouble come on your way. God be with you and watch over you. We humbly Ask and pray. Amen. listen to your voice, Mary, and the response was Rabbi. This is what we want to cherish with the risen Lord. And also as we listen to the words from the Bible, the sermon on the Easter day, help us to listen to your voice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Easter greetings to every one of you. It is my joy to meet few friends with whom I have little bit access uh, in the previous years when I served in St. Paul's Church in PNT Nagar. And there are a number of friends, those who are visiting today, to visit your family and the parents. It gives me joy to lead the worship along with Dr. Alfred Stephen today as Reverend Jackson Aya is addressed and hoping he is going to come for the morning 8.30 service. And as our secretary has passed on his greetings, Easter greetings, I hope he is also watching the live stream service today. Greetings, Marcus, if you are watching online service. It is our love from all of us here from Church of the Divine Patients at this service. And the, today's theme is given 
from the Church of South India's Resurrection, celebrating boundless transformation. That's the theme. But I have split it. My sermon part is the resurrection into five memorable points. Easter is seeing experience. Easter is telling experience. Easter is sending experience. Easter is receiving experience. Easter is sharing experience. This is what I'm going to share with you. Very short sermon and hope I'm going to see a very, very old chorus. He is Lord, he is Lord, so that we can all join together if God permits the time is allowed. Easter. First, before I go into the five-point sermon, a short sermon, let me bring a little bit introduction to the Easter Eve, uh, Easter's uh, importance of the Easter as we celebrate. This is the first Christian festival observed in Christendom. The very first, not Christmas, the first Christian festival celebrated by the early Christians is the Easter festival, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection, the meaning of resurrection is coming back to life from the dead. Getting life from the dead, that's the meaning. It is impossible to happen, that's what all the physicians, they say, once dead is dead, revival or getting life back from the dead, it is impossible, it cannot have it. But it was happened, it happened in the history and that's why the history split it into two before Christ and after Christ, as people they fondly say. The Easter season in the church calendar, we observe after the Easter day, the resurrection day, the seven weeks, the Easter season that we used to have. So all the narratives and the readings, what we have, what we are going to receive in the church services related to uh, Jesus' uh, life after the Easter resurrection with these disciples, with the church, uh, with his ministry, all such things we receive seven weeks after the Easter. And after the 50th day, we celebrate the Pentecost day. That's the 50th day pouring of the Spirit and the birth of the church that we celebrate on Pentecost, the day of Pentecost. After that, the church season turns to another season from Easter and after Easter season. And when to observe the Easter day it was a um, crisis and the problem raised and it was a ramble between church fathers and church leaders. That's also the Eastern Church and the Western Church. They are different in celebrating the day of Easter. But it was concluded in AD 325 in the Council of Nicaea. We always say in the order of service, while we attend these regular services, if it is Holy Communion, we say the Nicene Creed. If it is Matins, if it is an ordinary service, we say, simply say the Apostle Creed. But the Nicene Creed, the Nicene meeting held in the history of the church, they met together to settle the controversies of knowing who God is, who Jesus is, who God the Holy Spirit is, what is the meaning of church? What is the meaning of faith? What is the life after death? What is the meaning of resurrection? All such problems raised, problems were faced by the church, uh, the early church Christians. Also they faced, they concluded, when to observe the Easter day, they said it is after the a Sunday following first full moon day, that's the, uh, the month when uh, Easter is celebrated. After the full moon day, the Sunday which is false, that is called the Easter day. This is what they gave the Nicene, uh, the Nicene Council directed the early Christians. Easter eggs, you must be aware of the children are interested uh, having the Easter eggs. In the Western churches, it is, it is a must. You have to have Easter eggs, colorful Easter eggs, and people used to display in the church altar or at the entrance. And uh, if the if possible, children, they take small eggs, Easter eggs, chocolate eggs, and the uh, adult, they get according to their need, and they get the, the Easter eggs from the church. It is to symbolize the empty tomb. 
God is risen from the dead and he is no more living uh, he is not no, no more actually dead but he is risen lord he is always living with us for just for information there are number of writings apart from uh, theologians and church fathers and christian writers pastors and there's a one classic writing uh, rendered by uh, tolstoy from russian a novelist and who was awarded so many awards for his writings in 1899 he wrote a novel a dramatic novel on resurrection on easter symbolizing to indicate the traditional or the the church which is not able to come out of it is a traditional feel he was criticizing and for that reason he was expelled from the eastern church for criticizing the church and the economic order of the, those time in 1899 he was expelled in 1901 uh, this is for just information i share so if you for a, a, a ferocious reader uh, you please read and there are number of uh, movies english movies also one movie beautiful movie uh, chocolate there's a, a movie called chocolate uh, it's a beautiful movie but it's all Uh, mixed with the english type of cultural thing also but you have to forgo that and uh, you can read and uh, decode the meaning of resurrection from the film chocolate and if you if you are able to watch that please watch it but uh, avoid the uh, the english type of uh, say the film making and don't uh, blame the pastor has asked us to watch the, this this sort of movie and i'm i'm not advocating that but i'm telling uh, you how to understand the meaning of resurrection that the the chocolate is very beautiful uh, film uh, the one of the uh, capitalist uh, industrialist he used to a uh, control the past always he used to control and uh, there was the uh, moment of a uh, chocolate moment um, um, a lady from african continent she used to make and uh, cook uh, prepare chocolates and he she used to distribute to the villagers at the time it was a sentiment that chocolate is very bad it is intoxicating uh, sweet that's what the understanding uh, spread among the english and then when the uh, the, the capitalists the, 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 the the owner the, the industrialist he used to visit the uh, the lady who used to, used to prepare the chocolate he was fallen ill and he was fainting and uh, at that time the chocolate from the boxes from the top used to fall in on his mouth and he used to uh, taste the chocolate and uh, which really offered him a good uh, feel of uh, tasting the chocolate and after that he used to embrace the lady and he used to accept and uh, the pastor when he came to the uh, the church he always used to write the sermons to the pastor what to preach and what not to preach on that day seeing this change the pastor he was happily preaching his own sermon this is the story of the uh, film chocolate so there are number of uh, writings available apart from the church structure please do Uh, read those things particularly a uh, tall sty uh, the novel and the resurrection just for information i am sharing this coming to the uh, sermon point the meaning and message of the easter is the meeting uh, experience as our pastor also said we experience the easter field the risen lord it's an it's an experience of meeting the risen christ uh, as we have heard the gospel portion from his Mark chapter 16 uh, it is written like this Mary Magdalene all the gospel writers they agree one in mind that Mary Magdalene except uh, one Corinthians uh, Saint Paul he was not agreeing that uh, Mary Magdalene met or any women met uh, the risen lord first and except uh, Saint Paul all the other gospel writers they agree of meeting uh, the women first the risen lord and there are number of women they met the risen lord the meeting christ a woman like mary magdalene and salome a mary mother of james and a few others also mentioned particularly a, a, a meeting the risen lord in the early morning after sabbath and beginning of the day this is very carefully the gospel writers they uh, state after the sabbath and the start of the week day that's the uh, portion they gave and it was a uh, sun rising time 
so everybody can see easily because the criticism uh, he didn't rise from the dead and it was clear enough to watch he clear enough to see at a distance so it was jesus risen from the dead to establish that so the sunlight also is uh, mentioned in the writing they had fear about they had worries of who will remove the stone and the stone was very big and they conversed with between them who is going to remove the stone for us and they wanted to pay the respect to the third day according to the custom customary thing and they went to the tomb and it was open it, the stone was removed this is what so meeting the lord the experience was he is not there and they received he is not here and he has gone to galilee so they are trying to go and meet the christ they were running towards that the women they entered and saw a young person was sitting with white dress and the god godly man said don't be afraid this is the first word from the uh, resurrection uh, point of jesus from the angel of god don't be afraid don't worry this is the first message they received from uh, the grave in john chapter 20 we see the other seeing uh, experience of jesus the easter experience after the mary magdalene they ran as per the direction of the angel of god they ran to say the information to peter and john and they also were running in chapter 20 in john john's gospel they entered into the tomb and peter being the elder he just went inside and saw the tomb was empty it was a running experience seeing and running experience the elderly peter though he received very late than john john was running very fast and at the entrance of the tomb he stopped then peter was getting inside the tomb and he was seeing he could recognize that he is not there there also the experience is uh, was meeting trying to meet the, uh, the risen christ the another portion in john chapter 20 11 to 18 and the crying mary we read from the uh, crying part of the lady she just went and pay the tribute the, the respect to the risen lord at the time the angel said he is not here this is also repeated in john's gospel and she was crying the crying mary was consoled the easter experience is a seeing experience seeing the risen lord when we are crying and there was a word and she asked thinking that the gardener jesus is the gardener and he was appeared he was he was not seen to mary Mary Magdalene and she asked gardener here my lord's body somebody has stolen and kept somewhere else do you know where it is kept i go and get it back because i want to meet him i want to pay my respect to him and she was cryfully and she was crying literally at the time then the voice came from the risen lord mary very one word mary and she replied immediately rabbi rabuni pastor this is we can easily relate how beautiful are the relationship with the the shepherd and the sheep jesus was telling in john's gospel chapter 10 and other portions also i know my sheep i call them by name and they obey and they follow me the risen lord was asking consoling him mary and she responded rabuni it uh, seeing meeting is an experience is very very deep though it's i put it that's a very simple word but the relationship is very very strong between uh, jesus christ and his disciples it's like it goes like this when someone from the family going away for two or three days coming late in the night standing in front of the door knocking the door and inside the family member's daughter or the wife or the children who is that knocking the door we ask 
It is me. I am dead here. This is what we used to say. The children will understand. The wife will know the voice of the person who is standing in front of the door. This is what the relationship. Once the voice is heard, and there is a good response. We all obey when we listen to the voice of the risen Lord. This is what the seeing experience. The sending experience also is there. Easter is the powerful experience in the church. We can turn down the weakened vessels. John chapter 20, 19, Jesus appeared in the midst of the disciples when the doors were locked. They were inside because of the fear of the Jew. This is what we read from John's Gospel 20, 19. And God was appeared, Jesus was appeared to them, said, Peace to you. The risen Lord said the word, Peace be with you. And also he showed the sides and hands, the wounded hands of the risen Lord. And they rejoiced. This is what the inside room disciples they enjoyed. And after that, the command was, I send you as my father has sent me. I am going to send you. I give the power. You go and preach this, share this. Not only that, he offered, he blowed the Holy Spirit on them. Receive the Holy Spirit. And get the power, get the, get the empowerment from the fear. Don't shut the door. You go, open the door and go out and preach that I am risen from the dead. The Thomas also was there. He was not appeared. He was not with the disciples. And he didn't believe when uh, the women and Mary Magdalene particularly said and shared the gospel that we have seen the risen Lord. And Thomas was not courageous enough to receive and believe that. And uh, to him also, Jesus appeared to prove that his resurrection was physical resurrection. The door was closed. Jesus could enter into the door. That's the one glorified body. When he was sewing the side and the hands, it is you come and touch. It is to prove that his resurrection was physical resurrection. So Thomas, like faithful people also, we have in the churches. I want to believe only when I see things. I don't want to share, accept when others say. This is the faith contradiction existence of church. We have a group of people. They believe together when others say. And, and there are people, no, only if I experience, I then believe. Two sort of group of people are there. But both, for both of them, Jesus Christ proved, here am I, I come into the door, here come and touch. And you can experience the uh, risen physical and glorified body of Christ. The experience of Emmaus of disciples, they encountered with the risen Lord and their eyes were closed. When Jesus took the bread and blessed it and gave it to them, and they were able to realize he is our Lord. And the eyes were opened. This is what the scripture says. So it is a sharing experience. It is a sending experience. God sends out. And it is an empowering experience. Powerful experience. And seeing experience. And this is what we are expected to carry the message from today. The Easter service. Let us share the eat, let share and eat the meal of the resurrected Lord. And there was meal shared by the Lord. Come and eat, my children. This is what Jesus said in the uh, discourses that we are going to have in the following weeks. And morning breakfast he used to share when the uh, disciples they were fishing. All such uh, narratives we get. And Peter was going back to the uh, old job and uh, he was called back again. This is what the experience. And there was a, a scolding aspect also it is there in the gospel. When Mary and other women, they shared, the disciples, they did not believe that he is risen from uh, the dead. And Jesus was getting angry. He charged their unbelief situation. He 
he told, he believed and trust, go and do the ministry with the power that of God that I received, I, I raised from the dead. This is what the message of the Easter today. Let us sing together with me. I invite just one chorus so that we celebrate the Holy Communion. He is Lord, He is Lord. He is risen from the dead that He is not very old chorus. that we want to see and receive the power of Christ and we want to listen to your voice, the risen Lord, Mary Rabuni, here am I, go, receive the Holy Spirit, offer the forgiveness, say peace, fear not with this message, Lord let us go from this service taking part in the Holy Communion. Bless the people, those who listen to your voice. Bless family after family, person after person. Let us live out with the hope that there is a resurrection. There is a hope of raising from the dead when we struggle with evil, evil structures. And let us not be afraid of challenging the unjust orders of this world as Jesus is set in front of us and he is the model to us. Lord, let us hope this and go with the belief that you are the Lord always walking with us as you have walked with the Emmaus disciples. You are sharing the experience, you are sharing everything what we need. You are consoling us when we are in distress as you have consoled Mary. Lord, thank you for bringing your message today through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, experience and faith go hand in hand. If you do not experience, we don't have faith. And if you don't have faith, without experience, that experience will be, uh, that faith will be baseless. So even as we stand to affirm our faith, 
Let us see if these words that are said, put together in the Nicene Creed, an experience in our life and affirm our faith with the confidence that this is our experience. May we all arise and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us people and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was also crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. He shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is quaked by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We will have the litany now. We'll have the litany, fourth litany, and after every bidding, our response will be, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For peace and justice in the whole world, and for the fullness of life in Christ for all men, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our country, its president, ministers, and those who serve in its government, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who work in fields and factories, in workshops and mines, and all who labor with their hands to provide for our needs, Lord, near mercy, hear our prayer. For teachers and students, scientists, artists, and craftsmen, and those engaged in the work of healing, Lord, near mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering, the poor and hungry, the destitute and the oppressed, the sick and the dying. Lord, near mercy, hear our prayer. For the unity of all God's people and for their work and witness in the world. Lord, near mercy, hear our prayer. For bishops and all of the ministers, especially our moderator and our bishop, that they may be faithful in their ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that we may make known the goodness and power of him who called us out of darkness into his light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That, that with all his people who have faithfully served him here and have died, we may also come to eternal joy in his presence. Lord, Lord in your mercy, mercy hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us take this time to pray for those people who are longing to have the experience of resurrection. Let us pray for the individuals who are being crucified day in and day out. the society which is crucified day in and day out 
by the unjust powers of the world. People who are longing to have uh, the hope of life. Let us pray for all those people who are suffering unjustly. May this day be a day in which they get the hope of their life. May the Easter morning bring them hope. May the meaning of the risen Lord, the reality of the risen Lord, be true in their life. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, who knowest our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking, we beseech thee to have compassion upon our infirmities and those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask, vouchsafe to give us for the worthiness of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. So after the service, there's going to be the coffee fellowship arranged by the church. Please do join and enjoy the fellowship. And it's my joy to acknowledge the services of a few uh, church leaders of decorating uh, today's uh, altar, the Easter altar and the other side of the church and the flower decoration particularly. God be with them as they have done the work meticulously. <clears throat> Shall we all stand for the preparation of the breaking of the bread? Behold, how good and joyful a thing it is, brethren, to dwell together in unity. We who are many are one bread, one body, for we all partake of one bread. I will offer in his dwelling an oblation, with great gladness. I will sing and speak praises unto thee. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share one another a sign of peace. For the offer tree, we shall sing the hymn 6 8 Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The strife is o'er, the battle is done. Hymnal 6 8.
have received Lord we thank you for Devara Jayas and for healing touch upon him as he was not well the last few weeks and as he is here with the family to offer thanksgiving for the birthday and wedding anniversary and the healing touch in his life we ask you, Lord, you bless him, bless his son and the family members. And answer all the prayers that he is offered in your presence, particularly in his health needs. You be with whom, Lord, as you have traveled with the recent presence in the church, with the believers, those who asked your help. The same risen Lord may strengthen him and grant all the mercies. The grace, the love, and the blessing of God be with you now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Father, who through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, has consecrated for us a new and living way to the throne of grace, we come to you through him, unworthy as we are, and we humbly beseech you to accept and use us and these our gifts for thy glory. All that is in heaven and earth is thine and of thine own do we give to thee. Amen. Let us say the Gloria together. Be present, be present, O Jesus, thou good high priest, as thou wast in the midst of thy disciples, and make thyself known to us, the breaking of the bread, who live us and reigneth, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is verily made right and our bounden duty that we should at all times in all places give thanks unto the O Lord, Holy Father Almighty and everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, the Son, our Lord, through whom thou didst create the heavens and earth and all that is in, in them and didst make people in thine own image, and when he had fallen into sin, didst redeem him to be the first fruits of a new creation. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify the glorious name, evermore praising thee, and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, and Most High. Blessed be the come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Truly, holy, truly blessed art thou, O Heavenly Father, 
who of the tender love towards mankind didst give thine only Son Jesus Christ to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thee by his own oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is set for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as you often as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Thy death, O Lord, we commemorate. Thy resurrection, we confess. And the second coming, we await. Glory be to thee, O Christ. Wherefore, O Father, having in remembrance the, pre the precious death and the passion and glorious resurrection and ascension of thy Son, our Lord, we thy servants do this in remembrance of him, as he hath commanded until his coming again, giving thanks to thee for the perfect redemption which thou hast wrought for us in him. We give thanks to thee, we praise thee, we glorify thee, O Lord our God. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to sanctify with thy Holy Spirit us and these thine own gifts of bread and wine, that the bread which we break may be the communion of the body of Christ, and the cup that which we, which we bless, the communion of the blood of Christ. Grant that being joined together in him we may all attain to the unity of the faith, and may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, even Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, so we are bold to say the Lord's Prayer together, O Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven, Let us pray together the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness. Whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a communion in the body of Christ?
you are privileged to come and receive the blessed elements of the Lord. Come and receive the blessings. the true bread of life broken for you the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ the true wine shed for you
having received the body and blood of Christ. Let us all say to the Thanksgiving prayer found in page 17 in the prayer book, the first prayer. O Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who has accepted us as thy son, children in thy beloved Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and has fed us with the spiritual food of his most precious body and blood, giving us the forgiveness of our sins and the promise of everlasting life. We thank and praise thee for these indestructible benefits, and we offer and present unto thee ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a holy and living sacrifice, which is our reasonable service. Grant us grace not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, that we may that we may at all loss rejoice with thy saints, the heavenly kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Let us rise and sing to the glory of God, the closing hymn 7 0. Jesus, leave us thy terrors now. 7 0 from the hymnal. That's closing hymn, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you. 
Thank you, Lord, for being with us. And let us carry the experience of meeting, and seeing, receiving, sharing the power of risen Christ. The grace be available to all of us in each and every moment of our life. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.